That same audio. Huh? That same audio. That, that do it? Get a post, you gotta know what the same audio you ready for that What's happening, man? <laughs> Quincy Avery. Uh, it's the quarterback takeover, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you I got that I, shit on. I, I, put, I read the brand today. I said if I was coming over here, I'm a quarterback. I got to think like that. I got to be like that, man. Hey, uh, we're excited, man. We've been waiting on this. I mean, me and Smooth been talking about this for a while, man. We yeah. wanted to get you to the... I didn't think it was going to come. Why you didn't think it was going to come? I thought it was going to keep on flaking and not come. Oh, that's not me, though. You know, I think people give me a bad rep in this city. Like that's that's the, the energy I be on. The Hollywood energy. Yeah. Why? You don't have that? Not at all. Why, Why? you think people? Yeah. Why you think that? You know, I think when you uh, attain a certain status or okay. you know uh, level of in in like the training game that uh -huh. you're in, I think people look at you a certain way. Like, oh, he thinks he's this, or he thinks he's that. Okay. Right. But that's pretty far from the truth about me. All right. Cause he was on time today. Always. He was here before me. He was mad that everybody else wasn't on time. You know, I'm here so, to do my part. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, I gotta <laughs> give him that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But no, um, in quick though, because I know everybody doesn't know everything about you. They don't know the background of how you got to where you at now. You don't know your, your, your level of success or what got you to the platform where you at now. But just talk to us. Tell us how you got to where you at now and, and kind of what's made Quincy Avery. I'm gonna give y'all the shorter version of okay. a long story. Um, Play football coming up like everybody else, son of a football coach. Got done playing football. I got done high school, went to college at Morehouse, played there, ended up playing wide receiver from Morehouse. I went to UCLA. I was on that coaching staff, worked heavily with the quarterbacks. Um, I had been around quarterbacks all my life. My dad was a coach. But when I was there, um, I asked the coach or, or the associate AD, like, let's get the football players some suits. They likely aren't all going to make the NFL. Like, we can set them up for life. He's like, yo, that's not really our job. We're here to win football games. So at that point, I'm like, I want to get into private training. Packed up my stuff at UCLA. I've been living in a locker room, drove to Atlanta, was living out my car for a little over a year and a half. And I would just Facebook message every kid who looked like a quarterback. Didn't know if you was, was hoping you were. We'd get on GMSAA, the Georgia Middle School Athletic Association website, go to the football teams, Match up a kid's name, 1 through 19, everybody got a message. Find their parents on Facebook and send them a message trying to get them to come out. That didn't work. Did that nonstop. Set up a camp, really a fake camp. Couldn't get a field because I couldn't afford a field. Did that at 5 a.m. No one came, but Josh Dobbs ended up hitting me after that. I was like, yo, I want to train. Can you make your camp? Got a chance to train with him. And it just kind of took off from there. Like, he was just that one person, like, taking a chance on you. Yeah. And just kept building from there. And now I, I probably got, or, or the company that I built, probably the second largest quarterback training company in the country. Okay. It, so it's, so who who's all in the, in the quarterback? Like quarterback takeover? The quarterback takeover. Yeah. The quarterback takeover is myself, Sean McAvoy, Brian Beasley, Sha Shorty, um, Dre. I just, he just moved up. He's going to be an assistant coach for this. Okay. Then we got a content team. Um, I think I'm onboarding a COO to kind of help take the business to yeah. another level. We got Denise, we got Darla, we got Fitch, we got Bryce, we got AB, we got Dino, we got Daryl, yeah. uh, and we got V. So I think it's like 13 people or something. But we're growing. Yeah. 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 I'm about to start licensing our quarterback takeover. Okay. So people in other other states can be like, yo, we're a quarterback takeover. Nice. Your content is top level too, though. I gotta give you that. That's because of the cameras, right? Yeah. <laughs> he, he spent a little money out there. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. You get a little money, you gotta spend a little they money. They say content you know is king? Yeah. Yes, sir. So if you ain't spending no money, you ain't gonna make nothing. Yeah, yeah. I'm scared when I don't make no money, right? Exactly, man. Yeah. Um, I, I, I say this. Uh, so, through the course of this process and getting to where you're at now, like, what are, what are some of the lessons and things that you learned through this piece? Discipline. Discipline was probably the biggest thing. I think people take that for granted. Like, it would have been easy for me to message 30 kids, you know what I'm saying? Do it for a month straight and not get anybody hit me up and be like, all right, I'm gonna do something else. Um, but like saying, I think this is what I have a hard time with with kids. And I'm I'm probably the trainer most out of anybody I know who tell a kid I don't want to train no more. Yeah. But it's this, when somebody says they want to do something and the work that they put in don't match the thing that they say, they want to do that, that makes me itch. Because mm -hmm. you're not really about the things that you say you're about. Your work ethic, 
um, and the things you say, they're not congruent, and you're not going to reach where you want to be at. You can only get that through discipline, like doing things you don't want to do um, when they need to be done and doing it consistently. So I, I live by that. Like, I do a lot of stuff that I hate doing, um, but it's because, you know what I'm saying, I, I know if I do those things and follow those steps and those procedures, like, I'm going to be successful. Now, I, I think you, you recently, you he was tweeting, right? Mm-hmm. And you, and you said something on the lines of, what was it about? He said he's about to start not training quarterbacks that don't train with other quarterback trainers. That do train with other That do train with other quarterbacks. In, in Atlanta. Trainers. In Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I asked, I said, you finna start something. And he was like, nah. And I asked him, I was like, it's because of philosophy or technique. And he was like, no. So tell him why you said that. So, yeah, that's something I've been really thinking about. And I, I'm probably going to implement it next month. And it's not because I don't think there's other good quarterback trainers. Because I do. I really think there's some dudes who do some really good work. I mean, I'm not taking it. But I think it's more for the players, right? Yeah. Because if you're learning two different things that are opposed to each other, you're not really getting better. Like, they're spending money with him and they're spending money with me. And I would rather them, I'm not saying you have to train with me. I literally would rather you just stay with that trainer. Right. Right. So I'm saying, people probably saw it like, oh, Quincy trying to, you know, monopolize. Yeah. Literally the opposite of what I'm doing. Right. I would rather you just go train with them. Don't come over here with us, right? Because I don't want you to not get, because you can get really good at doing something different than what I'm telling you. Yeah. You want to know what you can't get good at? Trying to do it his way, then trying to do it my way, then trying to do this other quarterback trainers. These kids would be like, go see three or four different quarterback trainers in Atlanta and who live in Atlanta. Yeah. That's stupid. Like, just go see one of us decide, like, I want to work with him, go all in. I'm, I'm cool, like, a camp here and there, but I'm, I'm literally telling kids I'm straight. So it's a jack of all trades and a master of none. A hundred percent. Right. I, I get it. I get it to a certain extent. I always think, you know, I'm open to, you know, different philosophies and different teachings and different trainings. Here's the thing. I feel like that every athlete has a team of people around him and they make him different because some people specialize in certain things, others specialize in others. I think that when there's unity on board, then you get to the point that, all right, cool. It's all right to see this person and see that person. But I think that when one person says that, this is it, and this is it. And I think sometimes it kind of deters people from certain things. But it, like I said, to each his own. I'm not gonna say yeah. that you know one one person's thinking is is the end goal or this is the right or the wrong way. Because at the end of the day, there's all a bunch of philosophies, and I think the end goal, like if we if we're really caring about the kids, and the end goal is the kids, you know. And like I said, you have a you have your own reason and your own right to like say, hey, cool, this is how I want to run my ship. And I think that's what people miss. Yeah, and even my thing is like, I think they actually might be better by just going to that yeah. other trainer. So yeah. I'm literally doing it with the kids' best interest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I thought like, maybe if they see all of us, it'll help them be better. Mm -hmm. No, I really don't think that. Because I've seen too many things that they do that are just the opposite of things that I'm teaching. Do you think it's it's not the elite kid, but it's the, is it more the beginner or the... The beginner the definitely reason? should only go to one guy. Right. right, because they don't even know what they like doing or what they're good at. Okay. Right? If you're a like a college level guy or NFL level guy, I think you should see as many people as you want because you like know, all right, this is what I need. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Like, let gotcha. me go, you know, I'm going to go see him real quick because I need to work on this. I'm going to see him. Yeah. Cool with that. You're in eighth, ninth grade. You're yeah. not really, you know what I'm saying? You're not really good at anything, right? right. You're just learning. So, you, those, need to, you need to specialize at that point because I think at that point, it's like, hey, I gotta lock in and get and develop and get better at these little aspects of the game before I can move on to the elite aspects. Yeah, of the just game. get good, like you know what I'm saying. And there's not that much variance in the things that I could teach, or Tony could teach, or Ron could teach, mm -hmm. or Sean could teach at that you know at that yeah, young age. You yeah, know what I'm saying? So yeah. it really doesn't make it does not make sense for gotcha. an eighth grade kid to go see each one of us. Like I would even recommend if they go to see Ron and Tony, you should pick one. You know what I'm saying? I'm not. Not that's just me, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that this is not about me. Yeah. It's but about kids getting better. This is Atlanta. Yeah. And you know what's <laughs> going to happen. People are going to take it that way. And you know it's going to take it that way. So I, do you not think a kid is going to go and say, hey, coach, I can't train with you because... Can you I cuss on here? Yeah. yeah. I don't give a fuck about that. Okay. I, I really don't. Like, people should know, like, I don't care. Okay. I don't need none of these kids. I, like, truly and honestly, True. I honestly want to say... 
I don't need to train any of you high school or middle school kids. And I'm not saying it in a bad way about you, but it does. it's not doing anything for me. Yeah. I'm only trying to help. Like, really, I want to yeah. help them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm not saying it like that. Yeah. And, and I, I say this because I, I've, I've been probably the biggest advocate for the longest. Like, and Aaron would tell you, like, for the longest, I wouldn't train kids, mm -hmm. like youth kids and stuff. Because for me, it wasn't even the point of the kids, it was the parents. The parents are more of a problem than the kids. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm, I'm just be honest. Like, because everybody thinks their kid is the next Pat Sertain, yeah. the next Jalen Ramsey, the next Darrell Revis, the next Ty Law, and they're not. Like, at that age, like, half of them, if I put them in drill work, they're tripping over their feet, they can't backpedal, they can't weave. And it's like, it's the little things for me that, well, he went and got it. He had five or six picks. And I'm like, okay, cool. He had five or six picks in pound ball where they're throwing the ball up in the air. Like, he's not breaking on the ball. He's not attacking it. It's the, like the little nuances of the game, he's not playing. So I get upset with the parents sometimes. And I have to, you know, I have to reel myself back in and say, hey, look, Jay, you, you understand it's that kid. It isn't the kid. It's the parents. I like, they be telling me, like, oh, I want to get this ranking in eighth grade. Yeah. Like, why? Like, I don't even, there's nothing about middle school, ninth grade football that adds up to anything. Yeah. Like, they care so much about being good at a time where it does not matter. Right. Like, so I would just start time. building. Just start building so that when you get the opportunity to play varsity, you play at a high level. When you get the opportunity to go college, you play well and maybe give yourself an opportunity to play for that. Why do you, why do you think that we, we have this big issue now? I think the quarterback position is... It's like beyond me, like with all these rankings and stuff. Like I get super irritated. I think that's probably why I'm not a head coach now, because I don't think I would have the patience for it. Like I would tell every one last one of these parents, man, if you don't leave me alone with this shit and just go on. Like, Cause I think at the end of the day, here's the thing. A kid is in eighth grade, right? What does he have to do from eighth grade to 12th grade? He has to develop. Like the kids that you're going against in eighth grade, they might grow, right? You might have a kid whose dad is 6'6", six, six, and he's 5'2 at the time. He hasn't even hit his growth spurt. He hasn't even hit puberty. So by the time he gets to 9th, 10th grade, he hits a little spurt. He goes 11th, 12th grade. He hits another spurt. So by the time he gets to a senior year, he may be a 6'2", six, 6'3", six, corner now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Where he was 5'2", and everybody else, and he wasn't even thought of. Yeah. But y'all go out ranking these kids early on. I partly think it's the media out in the you. The media is bad, but I think the parents who be chasing offers, that's still the worst part. Like, because all they're thinking about is this offer. They're thinking about an offer in ninth, tenth grade that you can't commit to. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So when you get caught up in that, yeah. you start imagining your kid against something like out there that you can't control. So if you can't control it, you go out there trying to put all your spins on it, still not knowing that all these things you're doing, all these people you're reaching out to, texting, they can't. They can't do it for you. They can't get your kid into a college. Like, I think people can say what they want. Like, I'm not getting a kid a college scholarship. Like, I'll reach out to a coach, but yeah. he has to get it. Yeah. The word is not a text message from your dad to all these QB coaches. Like, it's late. Still got to film them. We got to see it. He still got to perform. So we should tell those parents who run their kids' accounts on Twitter, stop doing that. Of course. That's, that's probably the thing that makes me the most mad. Those parents who run their kids' account, like, Oh, just had a great training session with blah, blah, blah. And then tag 40. I'm not. And they tag me. I'm not retweeting it. I'm not liking it. I think it's lame. Like, yeah. you, Twitter's not where you get a scholarship on. Right. right. It's not. Right. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't agree. I, but like I said, at the end of the day, man, I think it's the state of the union with recruiting is horrible. Right? Because it's not. It's, I, I went to college in 2002. It was my freshman year in college. We still were using VHS tapes. I like, remember making mine. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Using VHS tapes. There was no. You put the, the middle folder? Yeah. yeah, yeah so it off. <laughs> I, I, I tried to put it inside the, inside the little the case of the vanilla folder. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? The cardboard joint. To put it in there. Yeah, Label yeah. the joint yeah. on the side. Justin Miller's highlight. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? From uh, 2001. Yeah. Just to let them see this, right? But the thing about it was, you had to send that to 30, 40 schools. And you had to call to make sure they actually got your take because if not, that thing could get lost in the shuffle, yeah, right? right? It may not get there. But also at the same time, it's, it's like the offers aren't real anymore, right? I've had, I've had this conversation with countless coaches because I know, like, you know, we, we, now most of the coaches who are college coaches at this level now 
or my peers. Yeah. It's like guys I play with. Yeah. So we have like we have real homeboy conversation. Mm -hmm. And they're like, bro, like at the end of the day, this ain't really a real offer. This is an offer for me to continue to look at him and continue to recruit him. So he stays interested. Yeah. And you know the crazy thing is they can't do nothing about it. No, they, they can't. can't they can't air it out on Twitter. All they can do is either retweet it, like it. That's it. The college yeah. coaches don't have any. Yeah. They're like, man, look. So I can sit up here and say, yo, my, my boy Smooth just got the offer, man. Like today, right now. Clemson. Clemson. Yeah. I just got an offer from Clemson University. All in. I can tweet it. All in. Pound all in. Well, they ain't going to say nothing. They, they can't. Like, no, he didn't. <laughs> they can't. They can't. It's like, it's bad, bro. Yeah. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand the direction that we're going in and what we're trying to accomplish. Because I, I, I want to get back to the real essence of actually recruiting the kids for who they are. You know, our pride schools like Clemson, not, not just because of my alma mater, but they're not just going to go out to everybody. They're just going to go for the guys that they actually want. Yeah. Actually guys that fit their, their, their mold and fit their build. Like, that's one of the things, the conversations I have with all my what? kids. I ain't going to see you and like, you know why they do it though, right? For the clout. Not even for the clout. You know, it's like a, a method that you tweet a fake offer. In hopes of getting the rest of them. Yeah. yeah so, I, but I heard trainers. I hear trainers doing that. Yeah. I hear coaches saying, "Tweet, you got that," and hopefully the rest of the conference or you know what I'm saying to follow. Yeah, but I, it, it to me, it, to me, it's doing the kid a disservice. True, I understand. because you're putting the kid on a platform that he really can't compete on. Because here's one of the two things: either when we get in the competition setting, yeah, it shows. Yeah. Like he's really not that competitive kid, and he can't compete on that level. Right. But also. You put him in a platform in a position that you set him up for failure. Because when we roll this clock around at the end of his senior year, or when the official offer letter comes out, yeah, and none of those letters are there. We're looking. And, you, and we looking. And, and you we know people are scrolling like, 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 like where your official at? Like, bro, you had Bama, Georgia, Georgia. Florida, Tennessee, Clemson, Clemson yeah. Miami, like everything, right? And everybody tuned in saying, is he going to post his official? Like, where he going? Yeah. And then you go to... Yeah. It'll warm a college, or, right, yeah. you know, Maybe like, state. <laughs> like, like that's like that's what yeah. it's like, bro. Like, how you go from that to that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. So, like, how do you how do you deal with that in the quarterback world? Because I think everybody wants to be a big power five kid, right? I tell kids honestly, that's probably not you. I, if you honest with people, like, all right, this, you know, what I'm saying, like, let's work. I'm gonna help you be maximize your potential. Yeah. That's all I can promise you. But I'm gonna tell a kid like this school's probably not gonna look at you. Like, I, cause I'll send the tape out, screenshot the tape from the the, the message from the coach. Like, hey, here's what he's lacking. Okay. Cause you can't give as many fake offers at quarterback. Yeah. Because everybody else yeah. can be like, ah, <laughs> no. Nah. You know what I'm saying? So I just tell them like, this is what you lack, and this is what they think you don't have. Yeah. You can work on these things, and maybe you can play at a school up to this level, or we can start figuring out some schools that fit your skill set right now. Yeah. And I probably lose some clients like that, but I'm cool with it. Like. Yeah, once again, it, it, yeah, it is what it is. Like I can't. I don't. I don't make calls on my behalf. Oh really? I don't. I'm not gonna pick the phone up and call. I shoot them a text. Never. It just, it's pointless. Like if they want so they gonna call me. They so know. you ain't not one call for Nate. Nate got every offer. I've never. You I've never, I've never I respect called. that. I've never called. I think they have to do it. Yeah. I didn't have to. The, Nate Wiggins was Nate, Nate Wiggins. Wiggins. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We, we had this conversation. Nate was gonna be that guy regardless. Yeah. Right. Correct. When he decided that he wanted to go initially to LSU, mm -hmm. I said, bro, that's, is that what you want to do? He said, yeah, I'm comfortable with it. Now, mind you, through this whole process, me and Corey Raymond talk all the time. I talked to Corey about Nate. We talked about the process. He was an enamor with Nate. He loved everything about him. Cool, yeah. right? When he decided that he was going to decommit from there and he was looking at the schools, he asked me about Clemson. Okay. Cool, right? Yeah. At the same time, I got a call from Mike. Exact same conversation. I said, Mike, call him. I said, he's open right now. You had the conversation with him, mm -hmm. right? They had a conversation, and it went just like that. Yeah. Right? For me, we had the conversation based upon our reputation with each other. I said, look, if this situation fits for you, if these factors are available, if X, Y, and Z are aligned, then I think that's the fit for you. But don't go just because I'm saying do it. Go because you feel like this is going to get you ultimately in the, in the position to be to the next level, which is your main goal, right? Yeah. Your main goal is to be CB1, as we call it, right? Yeah. To be the the, uh, the the elite corner in your class, right? Mm -hmm. To come out and be the number one guy and let, let the world know, right? right? But it helped for him because he had someone that he believed in, in me, who went to school with her, 
right? Who he trusted, and we was in a COVID year. Yeah. So like he really didn't have. He couldn't go to no camp. Yeah, he couldn't go anywhere to visit anything. So he was able to go there, and now for him, he goes there and he looks at records, right? That I got there, right? Eight interceptions of the true frost, right? You know what his goal is? Nine. I'm gonna get nine. nine right? Nine of them, yeah. I finished with 13 picks in three years. You know what he want? 14, 15. He trying to crush him. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. I had, I had a single game uh, kickoff return against Florida State, 282. You want 283. Told me you want 300. Yeah. <laughs> Say, big boy, you, you trying to go crazy. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, like, it's like a friendly competition amongst us. Now he, got, should be. now he got goals, and I'm like, yeah. but that's what I want. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if, if, if you're in that position and you're doing that, now we winning. Mm -hmm. Right? So, like, those are the things that I think that are going to help put him in a position to win and do things like that. Your boy calling now. That's whatever. So, do you you make any calls? I'm going to shoot him a text. So but I'm not text. like, I don't jump. A mm, couple guys have jumped on the table before. But usually it's just gonna be like, yo, I think you should take a look at this kid. Tell me what you think. They like him, they like him, they don't, they don't. The kid that I probably jumped on the table the most for is a kid named Mason Kaplan with North Cross. North but Cross. that's just because like who he was as a person. Like right. I knew if he got to the college, he was gonna do everything right. Gotcha. And it still didn't go how I thought it should win. Like I'm still confused at schools that didn't recruit him because I thought his tape, but then who he was as a person. But he didn't get to go to camps, Kobe year. He wasn't the biggest dude, but Usually I try to stay out out of that whole little movement. Mm -hmm. So where'd he go? He's gonna be, he committed to Valpo. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay. I, but I thought he should have been like a group of five schools. Okay, all right. But you know, I think I think the beauty of it is though he can go group. Of, I mean, he can go Valpo, leave a group of five. He out play. Yeah, he can do all that. Cause the way the transfer portal is now, right? It's like yeah. free game, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah. can do whatever you want. Just go ahead and ball when you get there. Show everybody they should have should have took you. And you're gonna be good. So. It's it's almost like uh it's almost like the state of Georgia in high school football. You know, one day you decide to go play over here, and next day you understand. play over there. I don't understand. I mean it's 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 countless kids I can name right now, but <laughs> I'm not gonna name the kids. I ain't gonna talk about I, it. Cause I, cause it ain't it, it ain't it ain't for me, cause like I said, at the end of the day, it's their parents. Because right. as a parent, you shouldn't allow your kid to keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. Cause I think you're setting a bad precedent. For what's really going like, on. Like, when you gonna work through something? When you gonna decide, like, this is hard, cool, I'm about to go to work. I'm about to go do the things that are necessary for me to take this dude's job in front of me. Yeah. They don't do none of that. No. It's just, all these parents wanna do is, like, how can I make it as easy as possible for my kid to do something? And when you do that, it's good. All right, it might not get hard in high school. Wanna well, know what it will get hard? In college. Gosh. You, It's gonna get hard. Yeah. Your freshman year when you get there, yeah. There's gonna be a point in time you're like, fuck, I do not want to go to school here no more. I want to right. transfer. And what you told him already, uh, when stuff gets hard, we can leave. Yeah, we can find another When he goes to college, he gets hard, what are you gonna be begging to do? Transfer. Yeah. And I'm not saying every transfer is for the wrong reason, but a lot of the way that, that these parents are raising their kid, raising some soft ass kids. Right. I mean, I get it, bro. Like I tell you, bro, I, I honestly believe that because I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't look at it like that because I, I, I think that, bro, like, we were raised in a different era. But like you had to, you had to stick through shit. I remember my girl, my grandma raised me all the time, and I, I played. I was playing soccer when I was like four or five years old, and I wanted to quit that shit so bad. And she was like, "Boy, I'd have paid my money to take yeah, your ass you out there. Well, yeah. you gonna finish this shit?" Yeah. And I'm like, "Grandma, I don't wanna play no more. I don't give a damn what you want to do. <laughs> Go ask my father tomorrow. You gonna be excited? You gonna run? You gonna kick that ball in that goddamn net? That's what she told me. Yeah. Right? So you know what I did? I ran out there. I'm fast as hell on the, on the track." Boom, I'm kicking the ball, and I actually started to like it. Yeah. You know, did I go back and play again? Hell no. But <laughs> I was like, no. nah. It's like baseball. She she gave me the money every year to go yeah. sign up for baseball. I ride my bike over there with my boys. I had the money in my pocket. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We get over there. I'm like, I ain't doing it. Like, so I'm like, because if I sign up, I got to play. When this money goes there, yeah. they hit. I'm I get to <laughs> So I say, shit, let me just go on back to the crib. I go stop at the little cannery, little, 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 little corner store we had, man. Give me a little candy. Yeah. I take my grandma back her money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm short some because, you know, I done bought me some candy. But she like, hey, yeah. I ain't giving them all the money, grandma, because yeah, right. I ain't want to play. <laughs> I really ain't spending about a dollar in candy. She respected it. Yeah, she respected it. So she was like that. So with that being said, like, how do y'all feel about the transfer portal? So do y'all not like it because it, like, 
you know, I just think there's no control over it right now. Yeah. If they had control over it, they said, hey, cool, you can jump in the portal and this is where you can go, like X, Y, and Z. Or we, they had a way to navigate it. It's like, it's uncontrolled. Like, you get, I mean, you get buku kids every year that jump in and what's like, Thirty-two, it's like thirty-two hundred kids that playing like yeah. college football, yeah. and then you get like every year you start you get like a thousand kids jump in the portal. Right. Well, how's it thousand kids in the portal, <laughs> and you got thirty-two other hundred kids? That's so like eighty-five like, percent in the portal yeah. that can't get another scholarship. They happy issue. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. They don't even it's think about like, oh, I wasn't balling at this school. I know if you're the guy and you got a chance to really go make some money, I'm all about. If you're a quarterback like at a big time school, you are supposed to go to the league. Maybe, you know what I'm saying, someone took your spot. You know you're not going to play again? Do your thing. But these dudes who like the, the perennial backup, trying to transfer, yeah, right. what do they want another backup for they got to? Yeah. You're just a guy. I don't think, think people are realistic with their expectations. Yeah, right? I mean, I think it's for every position. Like, bro, if you wasn't <laughs> if you wasn't starting, you wasn't doing anything there, why are you transferring? What tape do they have to decide they Nothing. want you? Nothing. You should have went there to begin with. <laughs> yeah, like bro, like I honestly, I, to be honest, I had this conversation, bro. Like I, I say it all the time, like you know, who's advising some of these kids? Everybody wants to go to Georgia. Everybody wants to, especially because we see what we're here in Atlanta. Yeah. So Georgia is the home school, right? Hero school. Everybody want to go to yeah, Georgia, you know, right? Georgia. If it ain't Georgia, it's Alabama, right? Clemson. If it ain't Alabama, it's Clemson. Yeah. But do you know they recruit five stars every year, bro? The best of the best. And if you're not that guy, why would you go there? Go to another a Power Five. Or a group of five where you could be that guy, right? If you're just average at your position, right? Yeah. Then go be average at an average school where you can actually have the chance. Like, to don't be you want to play? Like, yeah. don't you want to get on the field on Saturday? You know what I'm saying? Hear name get called, maybe score a touchdown. But you had a chance to be elite there because all you're gonna do is go to that power five, get there, and then do what? Scout team. Yeah. Want to lead? Yeah. And go somewhere else, right? Yeah. So it it becomes the same issue, like. Year after year after year. Like, I just feel like they have to put a cap on how many kids are getting into this portal. So, you think they have to cap it out somewhere? They got to do something, bro. But how they going to do that? Like, how they going to say you can't get in here? Like, well, they can, they can cap it per school. Yeah. Oh, just per school. Per school. Like, yeah. each school is only allowed 10 portal kids every year. Gotcha. So, the school yeah. makes the discretion on which kids they allow to get in the portal. Like, you know that. Like, yeah. you, like you know which kids, like, on the verge of going to the portal every year. Right. Like, as a, as a head coach, you know, like, mm, Tap on the side, hey, that portal might be too big. <laughs> hey, 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 Smooth. I'll make a recommendation. I'll call, hey, listen, I'll call my boy Quincy over at Morehouse. Yeah. And I'll make sure he gets you in. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like that. Shit way. like that. Like, yeah. I don't know the best way for the portal. Me I can't lie to you. I, I, I don't know. Something got to happen because they got to help you. They got to save the kids for themselves at yeah. this point. I'm not. But I don't know what's, what's the best best for him. At first, I liked it. I was like, shit. Because I'm a player first guy. Yeah, me too. Like, I love stuff that goes in favor of the player. But when it happened, it was like 85% of the people, they're not going to be able to go to school or not play this season. And they're trying to go back to the school they was at. But once people, coaches say you're getting important, you're off my team. Can't, don't come in this way room. Don't even come back. It's Happy you. bags and you drop my door. <laughs> If you if you're searching, but think about it. If you was in a portal, you're in a portal for a reason because they was recruiting another cast that was better than you. They already seen what they seen in you, bro. Yeah. Like you ain't about to do nothing. Like I don't I don't think in my eyes, phenomenal at the next school. Well, yes. yeah. Oh, oh, you mean like from transfer to transfer? Yeah. I thought you meant from high school to college. Like I just don't think it's it's, it's gonna be that much different. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Well, shit. There's a couple of fields. There's a couple. Courses. I mean, but that was different, dude. That's a. What? Joe Burrow different. I'm saying like there's a couple of dudes yeah, that quarterback. Yeah. If you elite at quarterback and you just happen to get edged out by another dude who's Justin Fields should have been playing at Georgia from day one. They should have sat Jake Fromm and played Justin Fields. Jake Fromm took like a the, the, the championship. Did Chuck him all the way there because he won. Did he win? <laughs> huh? Did he win? I mean, how you gonna win? You gonna bench him though? Because he he's taking. Oh no! Matter of fact, there was a game that year they were gonna bench him and he balled in the first half. Look, here's the thing. Wait, wait, they ain't even so much adventure. But they should have played Justin way more than Okay, and I, mean, I get they that. They gave Justin trash I, minutes. I, I get that. First off, Justin should have never went to Georgia. Georgia, in my opinion. Okay. I thought he would have been a better fit for Florida. Okay. Like, just my opinion.